to here. I'm here with who? Uh, Irvin Ochoa. Yo, and what did you do for this uh, OTS uh, that you um, played in? Uh, I got first place at Vacaville's Forgotten Path Games. Uh, it was the OTS Trophy Tourney. Oh, cool. dang. Okay. And I heard that you, you yeah. took a break, a seven-week break or something like that, and then you came back, and then nothing happened, and then you just went from there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I took a long break, and then I got some like I got a few games in like last week with uh, a, with one of my best friends, Oscar, and then the, the night prior to the event, so Friday, I just play tested with him from like, I want to say like 6 o'clock up until like 2 a.m., and we were just running games back and forth. Uh, I was choosing between one or two decks, and then... Uh, you know, shout out to him for putting up through all the bullying I was doing with the with the toxic deck of Tempai, <laughs> which I didn't decide to play. Yeah, for sure. And welcome back. And uh, before uh, doing the deck profile, you want to give any shout outs, by the way? Yeah, I want to do uh, my shout outs first. Like uh, the the guy that sends out the most right now off the bat is uh, Maze. Thank you so much for helping me out with all the staples. I made a post on the, I believe it was the California or Sacramento group page. And I was like, I basically needed staples. And he literally sent me everything I needed for free from rarity collection one and two and like that was like a big help of just getting back into the game and also shout out to uh oscar obviously for playtesting with me he's you know uh he, he was a champ you know queuing up and going through all the like i think i just at one point I was like bro can i just go home and i'm like no please like let's just keep running some games back and forth <laughs> um also shout out to uh to dat and uh kyle crowfoot for helping me with the and Derek freeman for helping me with the siding patterns um i was basically like you know, I I know a little. I'm I'm playing Fire King Saint guy, so I know you know I know a little bit about the deck because I, I took it to the Vegas three v three last year, um or yeah I think it was last year. But um you know I was just I was so confused a little bit about like what she would be siding out into like the new like the new decks post Rota. So they really gave me a bunch of insight on like what I should be siding out. So those are people that stick out. And obviously my friends Adonis, Chris, they're playing Pokemon right now. And but you know I'm here to play Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> welcome back welcome and ready when you are my guy yeah so i decided to play fire king uh snake guy so i've, I've always been a big fan the last deck i was playing before i took a break was you bell so i'm like i'm a big combo player and when i saw the new cards that came out with like volcanics and everything and the new hand traps i was like you know i really think uh fire king snake i was like it was just my my comfort of choice so this is a, a deck that i ran it's pretty cookie cutter but i'll explain like the ratios on the cards so it was three Oakenix, uh three kieran this, I'm going with the Farking Engine, Garunix, Arvada, the old Garunix, Ponix, um, <clears throat> Sanctuary, and the Field Spell. So these, this is a Fire King uh, lineup that I chose to run. And um, I really like the three Okanix and the three Kirins. It also makes like good, it helps with siding patterns too, where you can like, you know, some into some matchups, I was siding out like three Okanix and the Garunix. Shout out to Kyle for giving me that, that advice, where I was siding out like one Okanix and one Kirin and just keeping this post side going in. But seeing like this card is really broken with any other fire card is basically island and as soon as you resolve garunix like once garunix is in rotation the, the game gets hard for your opponent like the game's not over it's just the game's really hard like they need to be careful as to what they're destroying on your side of the field that's fire attribute because the garunix will start floating and kieran comes out and then you have Ravada, you have whale floating so yeah these are like the really good cards so these are the cards that, and to, to facilitate that we get to them through our uh, Snake Eye Engine. So, I'll talk about this in a bit. So, two Witch, three Wanted, the new card Deception, uh, OSS obviously, Hollowed as Amina, <clears throat> three Bonfire, Ash, Poplar. I played Oak and Flame Burge, and I also played one for one. So, the way like just me coming back into the game and seeing how the cards are interacting with one another in the engine. Um, you, you know, just uh, help everybody out there. These are the broken cards you want to prevent from hitting the board and from being in rotation when you're playing against the deck. These are the cards that help you get to that. So these are the cards that usually, like, bait, you know, that Snake Eye players, like, I saw the guy in my finals match for the tournament. He was, we were playing the mirror, and he played the deck just like how I was playing it, where we're leading with the, with the wanted, with the Snake Eye, with the Snake Eye engine and the wanted engine first, trying to bait interaction, and then we want to drop the nuke where we go, like, normal Okanix, or you go um, normal Ponix, or you go Kirin pop something, and you already had access to Garunix. These are the cards that carry the game, and that, you know, are just broken. And these cards help us facilitate to get to that. Um, I also played 1 for 1 instead of the third Witch, because 1 for 1 just gave me... 1 for 1 basically does what Witch does, except for getting you to the Deception engine, but this uh, as a mean engine, but uh, 1 for 1 can flex into, like, maybe you need Oak, if you're under Droll, 
or it gets you straight into Ponix, et cetera. So, you know, it's the same thing. And I, I don't care about like, oh, what if you get follows so or you get ashed? Um, it's the same thing as me witch pitching another card, right, to play the game. I mean, obviously, I guess like which puts a body on puts the body on board, but still one for one gave me a lot more flexibility. But yeah, these are the ratios for those. Um, also, what's really broken about Fire King is that uh, you could do your full like in, like as opposed to like um, the pure version with Fire King, you have Bonfire. Bonfire is so broken in the sec because you just go Bonfire for popular, search OSS, and you have Fire King engine without without using your normal summon. And like I love seeing this card. Just um, you know, as soon as you check for Jewel and it's not there. You know it's really good to um, go off with it. So that's the Snake Eye, and then went over the Fire King stuff, and then for the the non engine, so I went with Called By, three Droll, uh, three Follows, three Impulse, three Imperm, and three Ash. Um, these all these cards did amazing. Um, it was my first time resolving Impulse in game, and I was like, damn, this is literally solemn warning as a hand trap. <laughs> this card's probably gonna get banned for sure. This is like the best hand trap, you know. That I played with all like the whole throughout the whole event. I resolved follows uh, maybe like twice throughout the event, and and I, the most broken hand that I that I had was was the most important game, which is game three of the finals, and I had like follows, uh, impulse and ash, and like two engine cards, and oh like my goodness. um, I yeah, it was crazy. You lead with follows, you get the one for one, then you stop. The, I impermed the the ponix, and he tried to chain Kieran, you impulse, and like the game's just over, you know. So. Yeah, these cards are all really, really good, really solid, and you ha I feel like you have to main deck called by just because, um, you know, these cards can sometimes, like, end your turn, even in Ash sometimes, like, mm -hmm. you know, called by, I feel like, is really necessary. And it's also good into the Tempai matches, which is what I was scared of, like, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you know, ask, ask your opponent for the deck count, if they're on 40, it's most likely a, a Tempai deck, so mm -hmm. you can you can make them lead and go first, and if you open called by, you know, you stop the their biggest their biggest interruption that they have that's always backed up by hand traps so yeah called by was amazing i saw it a few times and it did its job mm -hmm. and it's and uh, for, 40 cards right yeah will you change anything about your no, list no, no. At all? uh this is not 40 this oh. is 43 i believe oh, 40. and I, I think moving forward um maybe i might trim down the okanix to maybe like two and maybe kieran and you know two two ratios but um, I need to do a lot more testing to figure that mm -hmm. out, and I got the regionals coming up this weekend, so I'll, I'll make up my, my mind for then, but, for you sure. know, besides that, the list ran pretty smooth. <clears throat> and then for the extra deck we were playing, it's very similar to what we used to play. It's Anima, uh, Phoenix, the Charmers, IP into SP, um, Princess, the OTK package, uh, Whale, uh, the Garunix, uh, Zombie Vampire, Fuko, and the two as Amina Fusion. So the only thing that's different from like when I used to play the deck is that now obviously you got the two the two new fusions and then you're also playing like Fuko and Zombie Vampire and this and the Garunix. Um all these cards did amazing. I played this this slot took over Phoenix took over um uh Sunlight Wolf. Salomon Gray Sunlight Wolf. Mm -hmm. Uh I just saw like Wolf is really good if you wanna have like your you kinda like it helps you play through Jewel a lot better when you have when you get Jewel and you're trying to access engine through vampire and then you can like add cards back with with Wolf. Or if you like ash someone on your turn and you know they try to follow you, you ash them and you wanna pick it back up. But um I noticed throughout my playtesting, which was just one day, like one long night, um, that Phoenix is, is a lot better and a lot more like the situations where there's a lot there's a lot more situations where I was losing games because I didn't have Phoenix and I didn't have a way to pitch it, to just clear something on board that was gonna stop my turn or even a floodgate. You know, some people were main decking like floodgates. So Phoenix did really well. And then also Fuko was amazing. I played against like two Tempai opponents and I just asked for deck count, they said forty and I said you go first, right? And they were playing Tempai and um, you know, I let them go first. They couldn't make, they didn't make a good board at all, obviously, because they're not side, they're not prepared to go first. And then going into, you know, I won game one, game two, they make me go first. I make Fuku and I pass, right? Mm. And that was always enough to survive. And you know, you just have to get a, the way you get to Fuku is super easy. Okanix does it with by itself with another fire, with another fire card. I guess two card combo. You go Okanix summon, effect pop, search for. Uh, Ponix on resolution, she becomes level one. Ponix triggers because the fire was destroyed, and then you have Fuku there. Mm -hmm. You also have Bonfire. You have Bonfire for Senka Ash, Search, etc. So it's really easy to get to Fuku. And Zombie Vampire was amazing. I saw lots of deck profiles that were playing like different rank gates. Some were playing um, what's the other one? Oh, just one. Uh, 
the one that the pe- that people play in Horus, uh, Photon Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, but most times, like when I went into Vampire, it wasn't because I was just trying to combo more. Like it, it was because I needed to get to Engine. Sorry. Um, and if if I'm in a position where I can make two rank eights just to make a fo- Photon Lord, in my opinion, I don't think it's incorrect. I don't think it's wrong. It's just your player preference. I think you're already winning the game, so you're not really scared of Nibiru or the, any other monster like interactions into your board because if you fully set up, if you have the flexibility to make a rank eight and it, you're just doing it for monster negate, I think you're chilling. But Zombie Vampire did a really good job as to going like trying to push into a board. Like, um, you know, they stopped all your like. They, they stop the Fire King stuff, or they interact with the Snake Eye cards, and that's the only push you had, or, or whatever, and you somehow find a way to get two uh, level 8s on board, and you make Vampire. Vampire just won me many games. And, um, yeah, all these cards did amazing. I also used, like, like the secret effect of, like, Mu uh, uh, Resiliago, like, where you, like, you search for your uh, Sinful Spoil um, spell, and then you can you can even crash it and search for something, or another, like, Sinful Spoil uh, card, too. So, yeah, all these cards did amazing. And then for the side deck, I, I went with this approach. So we went with these three floods and then these three for, for Tempi. We got Cosmic, uh, Perilia, and Crow. Um, I decided to go with this package instead of Thrust. This due to, like, is, and shout out to Chris Lachur for, you know, he's a Tempi goat. One of the Tempi goats that I know. And I've been in that position where he, like, back before Follows came out, he was mm-hmm. either, like, he would, like, go Perulia or he would go um, Shifter. Mm-hmm. And, like, I would go Thrust, and he would Ash it. And I'm oh, like, oh, I'm so sad, right? Like, yeah. it's like, now I just completely lose the game. But you can't Ash. Like, you know, there's no Ash would not interact with me hard drawing D-Barrier yep, or yep. one of these cards, right? Like, these are all broken cards versus Tempai. Yep, you know, yep. stop their turn, skill drain. Obviously, Tikavu and they play so many spells. Like the anti spell is so good versus them. Mm-hmm. And then Crow was uh, Crow was just for the interaction with like Runix and Grave or like a whale bringing back IP. Um, some of my friends told me like it's a neg one or like they didn't like that interaction. Like they'd rather have like Bestials or just other like like just bigger cards that you could put in instead of Crow. But to be honest, I just felt like with cards like Perilia and and Follows post side, mm-hmm. yeah, you you're gonna be drawing so many cards where. Crow like did its job. You know, I was I was able to crow like an IP and a Runix. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I did well. And then Perilla, just another version of uh, Maxi to get us to just draw more cards. Mm-hmm. And in Fire King, you don't even mind drawing some of the bricks. Like when you're going second, you're drawing like when you're drawing like some like some like even if you draw this plus like a Sanctuary or an Island or a Kirin, like you still have like ways to like combo. That's it's really, that's what I really like about the stack. Like the, this engine alone, like the Fire King engine, just does so much. And when you're drawing, like, other cards to support it, it just pushes through lots of boards, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then three Cosmic. Um, I didn't, I didn't, like, I was thinking about siding in the, siding the Skyburn, but, like, when I was testing, I saw, like, it did come up a few times, but to be honest, I always wanted opponents to search me Sanctuary because that card's so broken. It gets me to Island, and then mm-hmm. Island gets me to Garunix, like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I always want Ponix to search my island. I just, I'm just gonna side in the, the, the cosmics, and um, hopefully that, that's enough. And yeah, it, it was able to get me there. I was able to blow up some like floodgates, and yeah, that was the deck I decided to run for the tournament. Yeah, and uh, I was wondering for the the, the max C one um in your side deck, was there a time that like you kind of want to main deck it or not necessarily put the side? Just curious on that oh, part. Per- yeah, for Perilia, no, not not necessarily. Uh, when I was uh, playing, when I picked up the Tempai cards and I was playing with Perilia, even in the main deck, like it didn't feel that amazing. It's it's not good into every matchup. Like this card's really broken into Ubel because they summon so much, like they go like they have the additional normal summon, they summon Shavara, they summon Squirmer. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot, a lot of summons coming from hand, so Perilia's really good into those type of matchups or like mm-hmm. or even like Ritual Beast, for example. So yeah, I, I never really wanted to to main deck it. If anything. You know what? If anything, like looking back at the side, I would maybe want to. I want to have an answer. What I noticed is like post side when you're going into like you're you're going into game two or three and your opponent's hitting you with these floodgate hand traps. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like what I was doing in Cash Zero format, where I want to interact with them in a different way. Like, okay, if you're gonna floodgate me and you're gonna like you know uh, follow me or you're gonna Pirelli me or you're gonna shift through me, mm-hmm. um, I kind of want to sit on some traps instead of like trying to hand trap them back and kind of slow down the game that way i'm like mm-hmm. okay like you you did that to me i'm gonna set my soldier <laughs> i'm gonna set Tinkaboo. even tikaboo is not that bad versus fire king it is it, very specific it, it can it does come up i've lost to it where you know 
I have I just have all wing beasts in rotation. Like you know, it's kind of hard. Like I'm trying to flow in, I can't. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, what to say? Thank you for your time, Irvin, for um, getting first place at the OTS. And will we be seeing you at YCS um, Anaheim this this uh, December coming up? Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely planning to go, and then I'll also be at the Santa Clara Regionals, and hopefully I do well. For sure, and best of luck to you, man. And thank you for your deck profile. Your boy Cyberhorn92 is signing out. Peace.